Conversations with Candidates, brought to you by Crowing Power in partnership with Lakes Media Collaborative and the Brainerd Lakes Chamber. I'm Lisa Paxton, and I'm with the Chamber, and it's my pleasure to welcome Denny Schmidt. Denny is a candidate for Brainerd City Council, Alderman at Large. Welcome. Hi, thanks, Lisa. Um, when I first told some of my friends and relatives I was running for City Council, the first question I heard from them is, who are you running against? Well, my answer is I'm not running against anyone. I'm running for the opportunity to serve the city with a fresh outlook. Um, I'm a frugal person by nature and even more so with other people's money. In fact, I have a campaign slogan, pinch a penny, vote for Denny. <laughs> <clears throat> Regarding my experience, I've served on the Oak Lawn Town Board uh, on the eastern fringe of Brainerd for about 18 years prior to actually moving into the city. I have formerly served on the Board of Kinship Partners, and I'm currently mentoring a young man through that organization. I'm currently serving on the Board of uh, Crossing Arts Alliance and the Hospital Auxiliary Board of Essentia Health St. Joseph's Medical Center. I'm a, I also volunteer at the hospital and with a retired senior citizens volunteer program, and I also volunteer for an um, uh, interfaith caregivers group. And I know that sounds like a lot, but um, I have, I'm actually retired, so I have time to do all that stuff, and I have lots of time to devote to city issues. Okay. We're going to roll into our questions then. So if you're elected, Danny, what is going to be your top priority? Well, my top priority is uh, probably similar to everybody else's top priority. We have a pressing issues in Brainerd, and that, that's no different than the pressing issues at all levels of government. Uh, business and even within families. And that issue is budgeting in a manner <clears throat> that is commensurate with income. We all have to do it, including you and I and everybody else and the cameraman. It's basic math. First of all, we have to, we need to take a very close look at defining our needs and our wants and then not get the two confused. Once we have a clear understanding of our needs, we need to prioritize them. Then we need to look at our revenue stream. To make a budget work, you can either pare down your needs or you can increase revenue. In business, there's a creative ways to increase revenue. In government, the options can be pretty limited. The city primarily depends on local government aid and real estate taxes. <clears throat> For the most part, property values have trended downward, further reducing income from taxable property. Brainerd has about an $80 million budget, and I believe about half of that money comes from um, local government aid, LGA. Too much dependence on um, local government aid can be scary. LGA can suffer from the political whims at the state and um, federal level, and I'm going to recommend taking a microscopic look at separating our needs from our wants to determine the best course of action for budgeting purposes. So when you talk about needs versus wants, what are those needs? Well, we need, we need maintenance, road maintenance. We need sidewalks. We need police protection how much of those things we need and how much of it we need to spend money on it all at one time um, has to be closely examined. Any particular ideas on how we meet those needs in terms of how we, you would anticipate paying for those beyond what is currently being done today? I think we need to try to pay for those needs within our current budget. Okay. Let's talk about the other candidates running for office. We're interviewing several people running for this position. Give me three things, Danny, that distinguishes you from the other candidates. I'm probably oldest. <laughs> <laughs> Can't um, verify that. <laughs> I have, I've, I've had lots of experience um, managing budgets within the Oak Lawn, Oak Lawn Township um, where we have very, very tight budget constraints. and. Um, I think I know how to spend the taxpayer's money in a very conservative manner. Okay. So as we look at economic development within the city of Brainerd, how are you going to ensure that the city is business friendly? Oh, <clears throat> I can't always ensure that the city is going to be business friendly. I would just be maybe one person on, a, on, a, on the council. but. Um, there's a lot of folks that wish we had more and, be more and better paying jobs in the community. But as my grandma would say, if wishes were fishes, we'd all have a fry. We need to go fishing to catch fish. By fishing, I mean actively seeking out businesses and offer them a minnow or a worm to attract them to the hook. We have unsold lots in the Brainerd Industrial Park that are a haven, currently a haven for crickets and small rodents. They're not being used and they're not being sold. Um, 
Let's use these lots to bait a hook for a business that will bring in some revenue and some jobs. Um, perhaps we could give, perhaps we could just give them away and offer reduced utilities or whatever it takes to negotiate um, to bring in a viable business with decent paying wages. I have a strong background with con and contacts in the manufacturing industry, and I believe I could use this background for networking purposes to entice new or, um, or some established businesses to the area. Um, let's put our citizens to work. If we had the right kind of businesses in town, um, maybe we could hear something like, uh, instead of you want fries with that, maybe we could hear something like how many trucks of product can we send you this month? Okay. So as you look at partnering with other community entities or individuals, give me an idea of what kind of partnership philosophy you have. What okay. kind, of, kind of community partners will you get involved with? I'm so glad you asked that because <clears throat> I just happen to have a a written response to that. Mm. Um, I believe that sharing services, and we did that quite a bit at, uh, at the township level, I believe that sharing services, equipment, and other resources with local governments would be a really wise thing to do. It would, of course, require putting aside politics of various government entities um, to, work, to make it work in a manner that would save the taxpayers money. There, of course, could be some logistical issues, but they could be worked out. For example, when it's snowing, all government entities would need the snow plows at the same time. Pfft, can't share snow plows very well. However, schedules could be worked out for sweep, sweep, street sweeping, dirt hauling, and other road maintenance issues. Another attractive option um, would be to contact or contract some private businesses for certain jobs. Um, if we went out for competitive bids for certain maintenance projects instead of um, doing all of them our ourselves, it could serve to reduce the city's capital equipment expenditures. For, exa for example, <clears throat> let's say you have 10 heavy trucks in the barn. Not all are used at the same time, but they all have to be kept, and dr kept dry and in good repair. And every year the value of those vehicles is reduced whether or not they're used much. Maybe we could sell off half the trucks to reduce our capital expenses and contract out to local businesses who, by the way, pay employees who pay taxes in our community. When using contractors, they only get paid um, when they're actually working. They use their own fuel, maintain their own equipment. I would recommend to the council to explore the possibilities along these lines. I would also recommend looking into creating a co-op buying group. The county, the city, and even townships and neighboring cities um, I'll buy fuel, repair parts, office equipment, gravel, dirt, and other commodities. Why not look into buying these types of things in bulk at negotiated prices? We could save a lot of money. Okay. I want to clarify that questions were not provided to the candidates prior to their interviews. So is there anything else you want to add, Denny? We have about 20 seconds. Um, 20 seconds. Well, you're really putting me under the gun here. Actually, it's 15 now. Okay, I have no quarrels <laughs> with anybody who is currently sitting in either of the two aldermen large seats. Uh, both Bob Olson and Mary Cope have done an admirable job, admirable job for the city over many years. They have devoted much time and energy to long-term planning and budgeting and other things that can make a city a pleasant place to live, work, play, thrive, and survive. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us for Candid Conversations with Candidates. Vote November 6th.